The weekend is here and rest is near. It's a Friday. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Welcome on the show. And of course, we're anticipating the much-awaited UEFA Champions League finals. Of course, that's between Liverpool and Real Madrid. I've got two friends and colleagues from London. They are both from London via Zoom. One is a staunch Liverpool fan, Dele Oshodi Glover. The other one is a staunch Real Madrid fan, Hala Madrid. His name is Ladi Egbedire. Guys, welcome on the show. Well, Hello, Wally. Hello, viewers. Nice to be on the show once again. I'll start with you, Ladi. Real Madrid are believed to be a Champions League team. When it gets to this level, they always go all the way. What's your take on this one? Well, I think it has to do with the with the mindsets, with the personality of the players, of the team itself, its le legendary status, and the fact that uh, the guys don't, they don't just give up. Even when the chips are down, you still see them believing in themselves, believing that they can get the job done. And uh, the last time Real Madrid, don't forget, got to the final and lost was against uh, this same team that they are going up against on the 28th of, uh, of May. That's Liverpool. And that was way back 1980-81 season. But uh, I don't see that happening again, even though Liverpool, for me, they are the favourites to win this championship because they have a very crack team. They have a lot of impactful players in that mix. They have Musala, there is Luz Diaz, there is Cadio Mane, Firmino, and Debo Jota. But then, like I told some couple of friends before the game against Manchester City, don't you ever write Madrid off, man. If you do that, you do that at your own peril. La um, Dele, let me come to you on this one. The biggest assassins in the attack in Europe as we speak. Liverpool have those guys. Sadio Mane, Firmino, and Mo Salah. Can they take it up against Real Madrid? Um, Wally, like I said earlier, I'm glad to be on the team once again, and I'm glad to have Ladi on the opposing side. Um, <laughs> I stand to be corrected. Uh, when it comes to UEFA Champions League, Real Madrid is a household name. Um, the UEFA Champions League is, is like their birthright. Um, but you can't take away the pedigree of Liverpool as well. Um, you talked about the strike force of Liverpool. It goes beyond the strike force of Liverpool. It's the whole team. The pressing game has really helped Liverpool over the years. The club has given Liverpool an identity. Um, you mentioned Firmino, Jota, Salah, Mane. You forgot a certain those deals that Ladi mentioned earlier. Luis Diaz, for me, is the most impactful footballer in the English Premier League between January and now. You can't take away from him. The semi-final clash, which Liverpool won, was thanks to Luis Diaz's impact. Uh, for prosperity's sake, for the beauty of football, um, Liverpool and Madrid is the best finals we could ask for. It can go either way, but as a Liverpool supporter, definitely I want Liverpool to win. And don't forget, most of these players have the revenge mission in their head. Musala is saying what happened in 2018, he has to avenge that. They won't go unpunished. Um, thank God Sergio Ramos isn't there anymore. So, hey, maybe Liverpool stands a very good chance against Madrid right now. I think Madrid is a little bit depleted. But like Lado said, write off Madrid, write them off at your own peril. Lado, um, let's, let's look at it from this perspective. Now, people have started to call Carlo Ancelotti Carlo Christ Ancelotti. He can bring you back from the dead. And he has brought Karim Benzema back from the dead. Karim Benzema was, has never been dead before, Wally. That's a, let me, a, 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 a point of correction to that. Karim has never been dead. Karim has just been the player that likes to make his teammates look good. During the era of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, Gary Bale, when he was still very much active, Karim was playing for the team. He was his interplay the way he links up with the rest of the, of the guys, and was just making the rest of the players look good. Now, after Ronaldo left, he realized that he has to step up his game. He has to become the leader. And he has totally become that. And even before he came to Real Madrid, when he was still Olympic Lyon, he was playing amazing football. He was scoring beautiful goals. So, for the fact that he allowed Ronaldo to try, and he was played second fiddle to Ronaldo, doesn't mean he was dead. He has never been dead. So, uh, for me, if there is any player that will say that, okay, probably Ancelotti has fine-tuned his game to a certain extent, that should be Vinicius Jr. Don't forget, when Zidane was in charge, Vinicius was not as clinical as he is right now. 
But after the coming of Ancelotti, he made Vinicius to understand that, look, when you get into the 18 year box, two, three touch touches, then you decide where you will put the ball. You don't dilly dally on the ball for too long. Five touches, six touches in the box, no way. Which means you, you've already lost concentration. Two, three touches, then you're done. And you saw that in the play of Vinicius. You saw that fantastic goal he scored against Manchester City. Nobody saw that coming. You know, five, six touches into the 18 yard box, and he, he made up his mind even before he got to Elderson. So for me, if there's anybody that uh, Ancelotti has really revived his game, that's really fine tuned his game, that should be Vinicius Jr. and probably Camavinga. That's one impactful young guy. Since he came from Rennes, he has been doing very well for Real Madrid. Now, Dele, there's something that I have a problem with. And I think that's what Lado is holding on to in his pocket somewhere. That's what every Real Madrid fan is holding on to. We watched all the games in the Champions League. Nobody has an answer. So Vinicius Jr. and Benzema, you can't find an answer to them. Can Virgil van Dijk hold on to Benzema in that finals? Um, they say every day for the thief, one day for the owner. Um, these guys can have an off day on that day. Football can go either way. It's 11 against 11. And they have a Vinicius Jr. We have a Mohamed Salah. We have a Karim Benzema, we have a Seid Omani. You know, player for player, like for like, but you can't take away Benzema's pedigree, just like Lado rightfully said earlier. Karim Benzema has evolved over the years. Karim Benzema was never dead. It takes a man to own up and say that a certain player is better than him. That's what he said about Cristiano Ronaldo when he said Cristiano Ronaldo overshadowed him. He said, no, Cristiano Ronaldo didn't overshadow me. Cristiano Ronaldo... He's a better player. He's the best player in the world. So, hey, it is what it is. But like I said, like for like, um, I think Liverpool can actually match Real Madrid. And I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'm not bragging today. Um, but I hope we win so that I can pick up my phone and call Lado and say, Lado, I told you. Well, I don't know why you are playing this on the down low. Because if you look at the bookmaker side, what's it called? Predictions. Up to this moment, Liverpool are the most the most favoured side to win that championship. Nobody gave Real Madrid a chance against PSG, against Chelsea, against Man City. Now, Liverpool. And if you look at the form of Liverpool in the league, they've been doing very well. I think they've, they've won 42 matches on beating right now, and that's a fantastic record for them. So, they are playing fantastic football. And Luis Diaz, like you rightly said, a very important player since he came in from in January. And don't forget, you guys still have, you still have Origi. That is another guy that makes so much difference coming in from the bench. So that Liverpool side, for me, they are losing with a lot of fantastic players. They got so much confidence going for them. And their pressing game is, 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 is just amazing. But against the Real Madrid side, for me, I would say some of the players right now, they are playing twilight football. I'm talking about a player like uh, uh, what, Tony Cruz, Luka Modric, even though he's still churning out all those great passes. But his game has gone down a bit compared with some of the youngsters you guys have in the middle of the park. But experience will always come into play and the self-belief and the personality of each team will also come to bear. I like the fact that both of you are being modest today. Both of you are saying you are, you are staying on the fence. But um, let's leave the players alone. Let's leave the match alone. Let's go to the coaches. Delia, no, let me come to Ladi. Ladi, Jürgen Klopp is a Diemann shaft. He's a German machine. And he's strict with his game. What do you think he will have Opposing to Carlo Ancelotti on that day, on the 28th? Well, well we, we know that Younger Klopp is one guy that is always animated on the sideline, where, where, where and Ancelotti is always very cool and calm. Even when his team is leading by four goes to nil, he's still calm. Now but Younger Klopp is always animated on the sideline. He's always gesticulating, making love a, a scene and the rest. But you see, it's all about the, we all know the style of uh, Younger Klopp. He likes to press high up the field. That's the way the team are wired, and that's what they play. And, but I still feel that there will be some bit of space in the back where uh, Ancelotti will tell his best to take advantage of. And we have a, if you have a player like the kind of pace of uh, Vinicius, and don't forget Rodrigo, that young man, nobody gave him a chance, but he's been scoring important goals for Real Madrid. So for me, that's another player that can also make a big mark on that game. And like I said earlier, Ancelotti always cool and calm. He can't read his emotions. He's always cold, like an Italian mafia that he is. But I still feel that uh, the pendulum will swing in favor of Real Madrid. I'm sticking out my neck this time. Now, Dele, Dele, uh, Lado has answered both questions for me already. But let me ask you my question. Now, Klopp is a Diemann shaft. He's a German machine. He plays, like Lado said, he plays up front. 
But Carlo Ancelotti is an Italian. He's like the mafia. He's calling. He'll come at you. He'll come behind you. He'll come from backyard. He'll come from front yard. He'll come at you anyhow he comes. He wants to win. How he wins, he doesn't care. Um, Wale, um, for me, a coach who doesn't have a plan B, plan C, plan D shouldn't be called a coach. Um, um, let me make reference to a certain part, Guardiola. Pep Guardiola had just one plan in his semifinals. It didn't work out. Over the years, um, Guardiola has lost at a certain stage because of game management. When it comes to game management, when you mention people like Jurgen Klopp, people like Carlo Ancelotti, they know what to do when the time arises. Um, let's go back to the semi-final match, Liverpool semi-final match. Half-time, Liverpool was down 2-0. Um, I know. Um, it was 2-0 initially in favour of Villarreal, and then Liverpool came back. And, um, and um, it takes a whole lot for a coach to make a sacrifice. It takes a whole lot for you to take risks. It takes a whole lot to, for you to read the game and actually apply it the way you want it to be applied. Um, Jurgen Klopp studies. He goes beyond saying, okay, this is a better player than this player. No. Um, everybody thought Henderson was going to start the game against Villarreal, but no, he didn't start. He started a certain cater. And then Keita, for me, if I had my way, I'd have taken Keita off at halftime. But I guess the coach saw something that we didn't see. And it worked for him at the end of the day. So game management is going to come into play, if you ask me on that day. Whoever manages the game better will carry the day. Um, I'm going to sit on the fence once again. Like I said, it can go either way. Nado rightfully said that Liverpool might be the favourites for this tournament. But hey, you can't take away the pedigree of Real Madrid. They know what to do at the 13th minute. They know what to do at the 63rd minute. No bookmaker would have predicted that Real Madrid will come back from the dead against Man City. In case you don't know, in case viewers don't know, spectators left the stadium as at the 80th minute. And when they realized that he had gotten to the ex gotten into extra time, they wanted to come back to the stadium. No, 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 no. They didn't let them back in. That's game management. And luck was also on their side. So luck comes into play. Personnel comes into play. Risk comes into play. A whole lot will come into play on that day. But like I said, it's a revenge mission for Liverpool. So for people like me, I'm just looking forward to the ninth well, minute to hear that Liverpool has won. That's it. Deji, Deji, I might, I might still disagree with you again concerning what you said about luck. You see, luck can only come, come into play when you are putting a certain amount of hard work. Yes. You must put in a certain amount of hard work. You must believe in what you are doing before luck comes into play. Now, if you look at the intensity of that game towards the end, as soon as, what's it called, uh, uh, Ancelotti realized that he was losing the game in the middle of the park, he pulled out Tony Cruz, he pulled out Luka Modric, he pulled out Casimiro, he brought in the youngsters, and they started bombarding Man City's box from that very moment going, even though they had no shot at goal until the 89th minute. There was no shot at goal from Real Madrid. But as soon as they brought in all those young stars, Rodrigo and the rest of them, you saw that the intensity changed. That's the game management, brother. Yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. But when you said luck, it's all about luck might come into play, but luck is just probably 10 or 15 percent of what we're talking about here. It's more about hard, hard work and, you know, the kind of pressure you put into it. That's what really works for you. Not Lado, really please don't take me out of, out of context. When I said luck, I said luck, because, luck is part of football. You know what? Let's because, not argue. Let's because, not argue. Because because a lot, a lot of people, let's not argue about, because on television. When it, when it, when it, when it, a lot of people talk about Real Madrid, you know, being lucky against PSG, being lucky against Man City, against Chelsea. Now they were lucky against Man City again. Hey, when is that luck going to stop? Okay, guys, you, guys, you, guys, you guys must understand that it's against all about hard work. It's all about hard work. It's all about step belief. It's all about hard work and self-belief. Okay, guys, before I let you guys go, I'll break you guys off, of course. Um, let me put you guys on the burner. Ladi, let me start with you quickly before I let you go. Would you predict a scoreline at the end of the day? Well, that might be difficult to do for me, Wally, but I still feel that we're going to see goals in that game. Both teams will come off and on the in to score goals. Don't forget, uh, Mosala is uh, is Benfield right now. He wants to come back and get his pound of flesh back. But like I told somebody yesterday, his pound of flesh is going and get from a uh, what's it called Sergio Ramos, who's already who's in, in PSG, which went in Paris already. So I don't for me, revenge is out of the game. It's all about who really wants to win it on the night. But I'm gonna see a lot of those. The number of those you're gonna see, I can't say. So I'm gonna stick out my neck about the number of those that will be scored. Okay, um Dele, uh, before I let you go too, um we'll, let me put you on the burner. Who would you give what, what would be a score line at the end of the day for you? Three one in favor of Liverpool. 3-1 in favor of... 
Okay. Ladi <laughs> Egbedire, staunch Real Madrid fan, and Dele Oshodi Glover, staunch Liverpool fan. Thank you all very much for joining me on the show today, all the way from London. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, right. Now, I had Ladi Egbedire and Dele Oshodi Glover, but of course, Dele spoke about uh, Mo Salah being optimistic about the game against Real Madrid. Let's listen to him. We'll come back. Stay with us. Possible. Mohamed Mo Salah, he calls it a revenge mission against Real Madrid. Before I go on the show later, I'm not going yet, don't worry. Um, I'll leave you with the NBA, but Alexandra Zverev has reached a fifth straight Madrid Open quarterfinals after Lorenzo Musetti was forced to retire. The defending champion was leading 6-3, one love, before his Italian opponent suffered a thigh injury at the Arantia Sanchez Stadium. Yes, Zverev won that match because his opponent retired. It wasn't like he well. But he's in the quarterfinals for the fifth time. Hope he gets to the finals and, of course, wins this one. Okay? That's all we can take on the show today. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Join us on Plus Sports Special, 11 to 2.